Hello, welcome to Rando Take Info and our comparison of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 4100 level processor to the previous 3100 and 2100 level processors. For those of you who don't know, these are the processors that are used in Wear OS devices like the smartwatch that I have on my wrist right now. So I decided to make this video for two reasons besides my own curiosity. The first reason is how much better is the 4100 than the 31 and 2100 level processors used before it? And number two, if you've stayed away from Wear OS devices up to this point because you've heard about their lagging performance and how they don't really perform as well as say an Apple Watch or a Samsung Galaxy Watch, is it now safe to buy? Like has the upgrade to the new 4100 chipset made it worthwhile to actually purchase a Wear OS device. So a couple quick things you need to know before we get started. The Snapdragon 3100 and 2100 level chipsets are basically interchangeable from a performance perspective. Um, one is not really faster than the other one. The specs on the two are virtually identical. So today, the watch that I'm going to be testing against the uh, TicWatch Pro 3, which is using the new Qualcomm 4100 chipset, is my old Huawei Watch 2, which is using the 2100 level chipset. So basically, everything you see out of the Huawei Watch 2 with the 2100 level chipset would be what you would see with the 3100 level chipset, the exception being battery life. The big upgrade to the 3100 chipset was battery life. Now, not a whole lot of watches even upgraded to that platform anyway, but just so you know as you're watching the video, that's what it's actually up against. And finally, before we get started, just understand this is not going to be a real technical video. We're not going to be talking about fabrication processes and cores or anything like that. We're just going to be focusing on real world application and how well both of these watches do the tasks that you would ask both of them to do should you have one. So uh, real quick before we get started, I just wanted to mention I did uh, start testing the apps on both of these things and then I started retesting the apps and I realized that once you open an app on both of these devices, then it's in its memory. And then the difference between opening them up like on both devices, once it's in both devices memory, is much smaller than opening them up for the first time. And I think that's really what we want for this test is knowing what the difference is when opening apps for the first time on both of these watches uh, when it's not already in the watch's memory. So I tested a bunch of things already. I'm scrapping all those tests and I'm going to restart the test now. And um, so I'm only gonna be able to test everything one time because there's no way to clear the memory on these devices. Something I will point out real quick, notice just how much quicker the Tick Watch booted up than the Huawei Watch 2. Not that that's a huge deal, it's not like you're restarting your watch all the time, but it did take significantly longer for that Huawei Watch 2 to boot up than the Tick Watch Pro 3. So the first thing we're gonna test is just swapping watch faces, something simple. So we just press and hold and that comes up and then we, we swipe over and then tap. And you see the tick watch beat it uh, by a little bit, not much, but it definitely uh, had the edge there. Next, we're gonna test another simple thing. Let's just test the stopwatch. Tap. Okay, that one was pretty close. Tick watch beat it, but by almost an indiscernible amount. So that one's almost a tie. Tick watch just had a slight advantage. Okay, so next we're gonna test the uh, Android messaging app, which I actually have uh, set up to be uh, just by pressing the lower button on both of these devices. So let's go ahead and press it. And you can see the tick watch open that noticeably faster, probably in about half the time uh, to the naked eye, I would guess about half the time as the Huawei watch did. Okay, next we're gonna open up my virtual pet game. You guys can say hi to my virtual pet. Tap. And you can see my virtual cat came up much more quickly than my virtual dog. So definitely the tick watch once again wins that battle. Okay, next let's try opening up the Play Store. Oh, now this is the biggest difference yet. Huge difference there with opening up the Play Store. Did it much faster on the tick watch than on the Huawei watch for sure. Okay, next let's actually try to install something on both of these devices. Let's try to install AccuWeather. Both those screens came up pretty quick. Let's hit install. Download pending. Let's keep them both. I tap every once in a while to keep them both awake. Try to scroll up here so you can 
see the uh, downloading wheels on both of these. And you can see that the, uh, well, the Tick Watch started downloading much, much quicker uh, off the jump, but the, the Huawei watch is actually um, keeping up. But you know, it isn't just about the downloading, it'll also be about installation. Sorry, I just have to keep tapping to keep the screens awake. Um, yeah, so the download speeds for both were were very similar. In fact, it looked like the Huawei Watch started installing a smidge quicker, um, which I'm really surprised about. Okay, it's done installing. Now I can open it. Let's see how much longer it takes the Huawei Watch to, uh, to finish installing it. And now that just opened. So you can see pretty huge difference. Not so much in the downloading, uh, but in the installation. The Tick Watch was way faster installing the app than the Huawei Watch 2. Okay, so now let's open up the calendar app on both watches. That one was really fast. So uh, for both. So the Tick Watch I think won by a smidge, but almost uh, to the point that it didn't even matter. Okay, so next, let's test the Google Fit app, which I have set up on both of these devices, just as a swipe to get to. Three, two, one, tap. Okay, once again, Tick Watch wins, but also, once again, very small margin. So next, we have the big test, the test with Google Assistant. And I call that the big test because I feel like if you're using a smartwatch to do a lot of things, you're going to be using the Google Assistant a lot. Even though the Tick Watch Pro 3 has a very large screen by watch standards, it's still a small screen, generally speaking, so trying to do everything through the touch screen is very difficult. So using the Google Assistant can make most of your tasks very much easier. So we're going to try a few different tasks using the Google Assistant and see how well both watches do. Okay, first test with the watches, uh, we're going to message somebody. So I have, by the way, uh, assistant set up to be activated with a long press of both of the top buttons here instead of using the command because I don't want to wake everything up like that would wake up my 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 smart speaker my phone both watches like that would not work so we're gonna not use that although I will tell you that command works fine on both watches but if you see me holding down the button to activate the assistant instead of calling it out loud that's why okay so now let's test messaging so you can see okay so right off the jump even before we do that test you can see how much quicker the Google Assistant opened up even on the tick watch so I do think that's worth worth noting now let's go ahead and send the message text Luke hello how are you today So it couldn't connect to my phone because I have that disconnected right now because uh, my phone is recording this. But it still showed you how quickly it tried to send the message and you get the idea. The tick watch was definitely a little bit quicker for that task. Okay, so next we're going to test using the Google Assistant to set a reminder. This is something I use my Google Assistant for all the time, whether I'm using my watch or my phone or whatever. So let's see which one does better here. We can both up, press and hold. Set a reminder for two o'clock today to tell my wife I love her. Got it. I'll remind you at 2 p.m. Okay, so way faster on the tick watch. Definitely hold the advantage there. Okay, and finally, let's just test one more thing. Let's just test how well that the Google Assistant opens apps. So let's go ahead and Open settings. You have six reminders. Here are three. Today at 2 p.m. That's interesting. Tell my wife I love so it actually opened up something different there on the Huawei Watch 2. That could have just been a Google uh, Assistant thing. Let's try that one more time. Open settings. There we go. That time it got it right. So 
yeah, definitely once again quicker on the tick watch when trying to open the app. So what have we learned today about the Snapdragon 4100 level processor and how it compares to the 2100 level processor? Well, definitely on bigger tasks, the 4100 level processor is superior. Smaller tasks, not so much. It was pretty close, like opening up the calendar app and things like that. But on bigger tasks, and especially using the Google Assistant, there were huge differences between the two. The Google Assistant is much more responsive on the Tick Watch to the point that back when I was using my Huawei Watch 2, I stopped using the Google Assistant. Like it became so laggy, and that mistake you saw it make where it actually pulled up the wrong thing, that started happening more and more the older the watch got. It actually got to the point it became so frustrating I stopped even trying to use it. And I love that watch. It was still good for certain things like keeping track of time and sending a message on occasion or at least checking my notifications when they came in. It still worked great for that. But it lost its functionality over time as a real smartwatch. This watch I can tell you I can use all of its functions and it works just fine. And as you saw in the test, it handled those more complicated tasks way better than the older chipset. So I would definitely say if you're using an older Snapdragon level processor in your Wear OS smartwatch, it's definitely worth the upgrade if you have the $300 lying around. And I say $300 because the Mavoi Tick Watch Pro 3 is the only smartwatch right now as of November of 2020 that is using this chipset, at least that I am aware of. So just something to keep in mind. I'm sure if you wait longer, other uh, manufacturers will adopt using this chipset. But for now, you're stuck using this. If you want to know more about this watch, I did do a full review on it a little over a week ago. You can go back and watch that. But I would definitely say it's worth the upgrade for most people if you have the money to upgraded and if you've been staying away from Wear OS smartwatches in the past because you've been worried about performance I think those days are kind of over I think if you switch over to this watch or if you've never had a smartwatch before and you get this watch I think you will be pleasantly surprised at how well it works and functions in the day to day well that's all the useful information I have for today would you consider buying a new smartwatch with the Wear 4100 level chipset in it let me know down in the comments as always, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.